Hello, it's Tuco the Rat here. I'm here to talk about my favorite subject, which is single action revolver race guns. I'm going to tell you the story of how I got into single action revolver race guns and how I got my first single action revolver race gun and how I learned to build my own out of store-bought guns. Okay, so first of all, my, my single action revolver race gun story started back in 1992 and I was flipping through a gun magazine and I, and I found an article on Bob Munden and the gunsmithing that he, that he, he did back then, up until his death. You know, he, he gunsmithed guns, he built single action revolver race guns. And um, I was fascinated with the article. He went into some detail of, of what he does, the upgrades and the fact that his guns could be fanned as hard as he wanted over and over again, it wouldn't damage them. And, that, and, and at that time he had his primary fanning gun, they did the two balloon shot trick with. Um, he had had it at that time, he'd been using that same gun for light. 25 or 30 years, I think is what the article said. And um, so I was fascinated with that article. I had heard of Bob Munden before. I'd seen him on TV doing his tricks all the way back to 1980 was the first time I saw him do the balloon trick. You know, I didn't understand any of this back then. But uh, in 1992, I was growing up. I, I had my own business. I was making some pretty good money. I read the article. I was fascinated with it. And not too long after that, Bob Munden came to my town and did a live show. And I went and saw him. And it was there that I found out that he would build a single action revolver race gun for for people for, for the, the, the public for a fee. And I was like, holy smokes, I gotta have this. So I ordered a Bob Munden race gun right there. It was like May of 92, I believe. And um, and I had to wait for him to build it and, and get it back to me. And it took, I believe it took a little over a year, 14 months, something like that. And so I got my Bob Munder race gun. I, he, I think he told me it was going to be six months at the time, but it took like 14 months. And so I was, I was tired of waiting for it. And honestly, I kind of moved on to other hobbies. By the time I got it, it looked just like this gun. This isn't it. I'll explain why in a minute. But uh, it had modified hammer on it. It was, it was nickel plated. It did have a, had a, like a walnut handle, a, a wood handle, a wood grip on it. And uh, anyway, uh, it was just like this. It was a, it was a triple shotable, hard fanable race gun. I was not into reloading then. I didn't know how to reload, so I bought factory ammo, and it can safely shoot f factory ammo, of course. But the kick out of 45 Colt full power factory ammo, as you fan on that thing, you know, is tremendous. And um, it frankly intimidated me right away. I was at the time I was in my 20s, early 20s. I hadn't shot guns that much. I was like, man, this is too much to handle. I couldn't triple shot it, especially with live ammunition, you know. And the gun had a little problem, and what it was is it was getting light strikes, which is a common problem in single action revolver race guns if they're not tuned just right. Now, at the time, I didn't know how to fix that. I, I just knew there was something wrong with the gun because it was it like two out of six, you know, weren't going off. Sometimes three out of six, it seemed to be getting worse. He, he made the, the mainspring too light, you know. It's, a, it's an easy mistake. It's easily fixed. But after waiting the 14 months, I didn't want to send it back to him. I didn't know how to fix it myself. I was irritated, and so I sold the gun, and I've regretted it ever since, you know, because I really wish I had the Bob Munder race gun still. But I went on about my life and kind of forgot about race guns for a few years, and then um, I, then I, I run into Bob Munden videos and shows, appearances again, and, I, and I, I was like, man, I shouldn't have sold that gun. I really wish I had my own again. And I thought about ordering another one from him, and, and, and they were more expensive by that time. And, and uh, I, I just never did order one from them. And, but I never lost the, the, the passion I was developing to have my own single action revolver uh, race gun. And I ran into one, I started researching a little bit more what is involved in the gunsmithing and there's very little out there. And, th and by this time the internet was around and I mean, I looked and looked and looked and looked and there just wasn't hardly anything on it, you know? And, um, and then uh, I, found, uh, I found one race gun in a gun store one time. I could tell by looking at it, it was not a Bob Munden job and it didn't look like it was done right. The leads went almost half, the leads went almost to the next notch and it was like $3,500. I, I just, I could, it was a lot of money and, and I didn't really like it. I just, I thought it was, it might be a, what, what he used to call a funny gun with aluminum barrel on it or something. I mean, just, I could tell there's something with that gun that wasn't cool. So I didn't buy that one. But then, <clears throat> 30 years after I sold my Bob Munner race gun, 
I ran into this gun at a gun store. So it looked just like a Bob Munner race gun. I looked real close to that. I kind of almost wondered if it was my gun with different grips. But it wasn't because the, the gun he built me was um, a Cimarron. This is a Mitchell. So I know it was a different gun. But I bought this gun for $850 at the gun store. For $850 used, built by an unknown gunsmith. And I took it home and I shot it. I could fan it. I could hard fan it. I eventually learned to triple shot it. Um, but it did have some issues. It, it developed some issues after firing a couple thousand rounds through it, mostly because it was built on, a, uh, I believe it was a Uberti, uh, it doesn't say Uberti, but I think it's a Uberti Mitchell import. And it, it had a lot of issues. Um, the, the bolt timing was off. I think it had an inferior bolt in it. The timing began to advance more and more and more until the bolt just wouldn't work anymore. So I had to replace the bolt. I learned how to replace mm -hmm. the bolt. The firing pin uh, was misaligned with the frame. I don't know what that's about, but the firing... Well, actually, I think I do know. The firing pin was replaced, and when the guy drilled it out, he, he enlarged the firing pin retainer hole, and he didn't get the drill bit to go straight through. It went through at a slight angle, so that caused the firing pin to be canted. And so the only way to make that work was to without replacing the hammer, which was already customized. I mean, that's a big project to put a fanning hammer on it. Uh, the guy had to shear down one side of the firing pin to get it to fall through the, the hole in the frame. So this gun is kind of screwed up, but it does work. And uh, after doing some repairs on it, I did replace the firing pin. I had to do the same thing that the other gunsmith did to make it work. I replaced the bolt. I replaced the hand. The hand had an issue too. It's working good now. It works great. It, and, and I'm very happy with it. So in doing that, I kind of learned a lot about race guns because I could closely observe one exactly the way this thing was constructed. And it really drove my desire to learn how, how, to, how to build my own race guns out of stock guns because I wanted more than one. And uh, uh, not too long after that, I, uh, I, had, I had a friend, I, I found a new friend, that had a Bob Munden built uh, race gun that he had had Bob Munden built many years ago and he he let me borrow that gun take it apart closely examine it photograph it measure all the all the parts the way that the way that he had changed those parts and uh, so I got some more knowledge so between breaking this gun down and reverse engineering it and the real Bob Munden race gun I got enough knowledge this was the first one I did it was a Uberti it was a lot of work it was a lot of trouble because it was a Uberti. It, it had issues, and it was my first single action revolver race gun. Took me a long time. Um, I got done. It's it's fanable. It's triple shotable. It's got an ejection housing screwed right into the barrel like Uberti does instead of a lug. So eventually, if I keep shooting it, that will blow off and has to be repaired. So I I I got through my first my first single action army race build. I learned a lot. I parked that gun and then I built this one out of um, a Cimarron uh, uh, Pieta made. And this one turned out really, really good. And this, this gun is on my the YouTube video. The first time I do a, a triple shot off the belt is this gun. Works excellently and very happy with that one. Uh, the next one was a Pieta built uh, Heritage. And this gun is a great single action army. race gun and that was my third project and so I was getting better at it learning a little more figured out a couple mistakes that I had made this one got better then I built this one and this is my favorite single action revolver race gun that I've ever built and when I built this one from taking it out of the box brand new gun assessing it measuring it figuring out exactly if it was going to make a good candidate because the the Uberti was a bad candidate for a race gun. So I assess all that. Every process that, that, is, that is necessary to turn it in to a full-blown race gun that's hard fanable, triple shotable, etc. And this gun turned out...